Hey everybody, today I'm going to update the firmware on my Epson Pro Cinema 4040. And this applies to other Epson models as well. The Pro Cinema lineup, the new Pro Cinema 4050, the uh, I believe the 6040, and I'll put a list of some of the uh, projectors that I know that this is the way how it works. But uh, it's really simple. Stay tuned. I'll show you how to do it. Alright, so welcome back YouTubers. Anyway, to update the firmware on your projector, you're going to need a projector, of course. Then you're going to need to go to the Epson website. And if you look down in the uh, notes, I'll put the link to uh, the Epson website where you can find the drivers and instructions on how to, how to uh, do the download and get it onto the projector. And I haven't done it yet, but it seems really, really easy. Now, I have confirmed that my uh, firmware is out of date. So this machine is, uh, it was a demo, and uh, it has been in the shop for about a year. So it is about a year old, but it only has 34 hours on it. Anyway, um, I do need to update the firmware on it. So you need one of these, USB, regular old USB flash drive. And uh, back here, there are two uh, USB ports. One says service, and it's a micro type USB. Kind of looks like the one you find on a Samsung phone. That's not the one we're going to plug into. We're going to plug into the standard USB 2.0 type uh, uh, jack here on the back with this. So what you do first is go to the Epson website, as you see below, and look for your model of, uh, of Epson projector. And you'll be able to download a BAT file. It's .bat. Uh, directly onto your flash drive. And uh, you take this guy and plug it in over here. But I'm not going to do that because I got a little problem. It's actually not a problem, it's actually really cool. My projector goes into a soffit and it's a box in the soffit and it's really, really tight. So gaining access to the back of the projector is kind of difficult. So just use one of these wires. It's just a USB extension cable. It's got an A and a B on it. Actually, no. It's got an A and an A. What do you know? And uh, plug it into here. Plug it into there. And then I will have access to the USB port anytime I need to do a firmware update and not have to remove it like I did this time. So I wish I had thought of that in the beginning. But uh, we don't always think that we have to do firmware updates on everything. You know, when was a stereo receiver uh, a computer? You know, with networking. And uh, this, it's a computer. It has an Ethernet port. It has, uh, I think it even has Wi-Fi in it. I'm not 100% sure, but I've been hardwiring it to my network. And I've been able to project things from my uh, cell phone through the Epson app. It's pretty darn sweet. So anyway, I'll have easy access in the future if I ever need to do another firmware update and won't have to remove it. Most folks will have it on a shelf or hanging upside down from the uh, ceiling. You'll have easy access and you won't have to do that. But anyway, um, I'm going to go put it back in the soffit now and uh, begin the process. Stay tuned. Okay, so I've got my projector back in the soffit now. and. Uh, I'm going to do the firmware update. I've got my USB cable here with my little uh, thumb drive and it's got the uh, BAT file uh, already loaded onto it. Now we need to tell the projector that it has to go look for it and that it needs to install it. It's about 40 megabytes so you don't need a very big uh, thumb drive but uh, who knows what future updates might be but don't need a huge one luckily. So the way how you uh, update the firmware and this is a little convoluted, and I thought this was a little bit crazy, because it should have been so simple. Epson should have programmed it into the system, you hook it up to your network, and every once in a while you just push a button and say, check for updates. Well, <laughs> but it's not terrible. Luckily, firmware isn't something that gets updated very often. Now, the way how to do it is you're supposed to push the power button and hold it in place. 
but you know, first you have to put in your thumb drive. So put it in the back or use a cable like I did here since mine's in the soffit. Um, you hold the power button on and then plug it in. That's kind of a challenge for me. So what I've done is I've put a smart plug that is wired to my Alexa or to my, uh, my dot and I'll just tell it to turn it on when I'm ready. So I just have to go over here and find the power button. Normally I turn it on by the remote, but uh, according to instructions you're supposed to turn it on over here. I'm like, I've never done this before. You're seeing me do this live, so I'm sure I'll do it fine. I don't need to cross my fingers. Ah. One second. Ah, there's the power button. Okay. It's a little hard to do it on a ladder when you're leaning and you got a bad back and all that stuff. So anyway, I am going to push the button in and Alexa, turn on projector. Okay. Okay. I don't know if you can see, there's some lights flashing over here. Well, yeah, it's doing something because the, uh, the lens did not open. Normally when you push the power button on, the lens opens up and it starts to warm up. Hmm. I think we're done. I'm going to straighten this up, point the camera towards the screen, and let's see if there's been an update. Stay tuned. All right, so now we're going to check to see if the version has changed on the projector. I'm pretty sure it has. So get out your remote control and then hit the home button and it takes you to this screen, of course. Nope, that's not it. There we go. Go to home and then scroll over to menu. I'll just zoom in on this so you can see it a little bit better. Alrighty. Okay, now you want to go scroll down to Info and enter. Version, enter, and there you go. So do this first and record the version number, that this, the main and the video to. Record those down and uh, then do your update. Come back and verify if the numbers have changed. Mine have. Um, so if it has changed, great. Your installation was a success. If it hasn't, try it again. Um, if it doesn't work, if you don't get an update, you may be trying to install the same version. And in that case, contact Epson Technical Support. So I hope you found this video to be helpful. And if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. And uh, be sure to subscribe. I've got a lot of home theater and electronics and DIY stuff going on here. And uh, I appreciate you tuning in. Have a great one.